or whatever you believe in. Uh, Not that. <laughs> okay. Long live the king, whoever your king is. Amen. Or down with the monarchy, whatever it is. In any case, the revolution starts here today and now. Welcome to the Zog, <laughs> to the Zog experience. I'm joined with my good and trusted friend, Rafi Farber. And we are here a couple of you know, about 20 minutes away from the border, you know, uh, there's about 600 uh, rockets that have been launched from the Gaza Strip. Yeah, Not by Hamas. Everybody thinks we're the war zone, but nothing ever happens here. Yeah, it's, Just pretty, a bunch of it's pretty calm. Together. You know, like we, we could see missiles things. coming down, the Iron Dome does its thing, and, and, and at that critical high-intensity moment, we all remember one thing, that Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, we're here. We're just we're just chilling. We're not we're not trying to make this official. We're trying to go as Joe Rogan as possible. You know, you got to give credit to where credits due. I mean, I'm just gonna go Rafi Farber. Rafi Farber. Rafi Farber. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be Zog Yechi. I'm gonna be the rapper, the the, the legend. <laughs> I started off as Bet Mashiach on Facebook. In my public life. We're not here to tell you all about my private stuff. But we're gonna give you some tips, general tips. I mean, I, Hopefully you get general knowledge, or I don't know what are we doing. I don't know, Rafi. <laughs> so uh, we have okay. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of political changes. There's a lot of noise. I mean, Trump just met with all those religious Jews, or you saw that meeting? No. Trump met with like a bunch of uh, like very rich, rich Jewish guys in New York somewhere. Sounds normal. And. Yosef Yitzchak Jacobson, a Chabad rabbi of sorts, introduced the president, which I thought was mind-boggling. Finally, Chabad is getting some national recognition of sorts. I mean, I think, obviously, it was a campaign funding thing. You know, some rich Jews getting together with Trump, listening to him, maybe pledging a couple dollars. I mean, Trump's been... The, the, the common consensus in, in America is that Trump's been a good president. Uh, for Israel, at least, you know, compared to Obama, at least, you know. Israel doesn't need a good president. It needs a good prime minister. <laughs> yeah, same here, same here. But if you're a Jew in America, then I guess you need a good president for Israel. Because, I mean, Israel's something, I mean, that the Jews in America care about, right? It is. <laughs> it's the one thing that they can agree on, generally speaking. Right, so... A good U.S. I mean, I mean, if all the Jews were in Spain right now, I think their connection to Judaism would also be expressed by what the opinion of the leaders in Spain would be towards Israel. Yeah. So, I know that obviously I know what you're saying. In Israel, there's actually a strong consensus that we need a good American president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because even more than that, in America. That, that's true. There, there's a there's a big. Uh, slave mentality in this country that the real president of Israel is really the president of the USA and I guess in our current mentality that's kind of true because uh, you know the that but that's that's the sickness and the disease that Fagelin that Moshe Fagelin talks about yes absolutely lot, that, that we have this this reliance on um, on foreign leaders especially you know the ace of the leader of ASAP the leader of Edom which is right now Donald Trump and uh rely on uh, foreign aid. People will assume that if there's no foreign aid that uh, people won't be able to eat breakfast in the morning because all the food will be gone. They won't be able to buy anything. And, uh, really, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter who the president in the USA is. I mean, you, you, you can cite Chazal, you can cite the... And, I mean, intellectual... The, if we had a... You know, it, it could matter because America is the biggest player right now in the world. Not but for long. yeah, I mean uh, that could change. That's number one. Players have have changed throughout history. But also, if you have a sly and smart, not in, not sly in the in the derogatory terms. See, Rafi, how how the how the thing goes when I'm. That's what you should be seeing as well. Okay. Okay. So when you have a sly or smart or complex leader that can get his nation's agenda across, then you don't need to be reliant on the big 
on the big guys. I, I think I, like if, I don't if, even know what the agenda of the U.S. is, or if you could even call Trump a sly. No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually. I was actually. What I was trying to say is that if Israel would have a complex leader, yeah. that the first thing it was doing is just we're jumping and saying, "Oh, we need the president, the president, and everything." If if Israel would have somebody that's complex enough, oh well, that's a problem. But if Israel would have someone that's complex enough to deal with Trump, then maybe we wouldn't need to rely so much. What I'm trying to say is Israel can can uh, run its own show. Yeah, sorry, we, we're not we're not on a very uh, high budget here, so excuse our French. Anyway, so what I'm saying is that. If Israel would have a leader that's actually strong enough and sophisticated enough to deal with America from far, we wouldn't need to rely on them as heavily. You know, it's almost like, uh, you know, in a marriage, you have your spouse, and sometimes there's this tendency to just throw all the responsibility on the other guy the second you sense that you're losing it. Or you can say, maybe I should man up, as they say. And take a little bit more responsibility instead of just dumping all the responsibility on the other spouse. The second I think I feel like I'm losing the responsibility. I mean, usually if you have like, let's say the husband's supposed to take care of the business and make sure there's money on the table and food on the table. I mean, you see, you see where we're going. <laughs> the world is changing. But. Well, so here's the question: what what do you what do you mean that a strong leader? Well, like, what does that mean? What is what does a strong leader do? Well, Saudi Arabia, I think, is a good example of people that are extremely politically conscious and very understanding of what priorities are about. They don't let they they make sure that Dubai and and, and, and their own agendas are, are are protected, and they use America. They'll use anyone they need to to get their agenda across. Well, I mean. I'm not. I wouldn't say that that Mohammed bin Salman is sly or smart, or I mean, maybe he is. But I think that's irrelevant. What, what politically, really, politically. What, what, what's really imagine, imagine all the him. Arabs, the Arabs. Yeah, but, but but what what makes him appear to be sly or smart or important or whatever you want, whatever good adjective you want to call him, is that he controls the choke point of global oil supply, and he has for decades. And maybe he's a little bit more ruthless and powerful than his brother. Wh whatever. I mean, he can do pretty much whatever he wants, and no one, no one can get him. It doesn't matter what he does because the world needs his oil. So you're saying it's about the power that he has. It's about it's about money. It's about power. And B and B B B, for example, why is he not a strong leader? Because, uh, because he's spending all of his energy surviving politically, and there's nothing to fall back on. He's always trying to piece together these like. Hab jab or whatever coalitions of uh, and trying to stay out of prison and that's where all of his energy is. He doesn't care about anything else. Okay, yeah, I mean that, that's easy. There was the, the there was the uh, grandson of uh, what's his name, Robin, that gave it to BB in the teeth, kind of. Okay. I mean, I mean, arguably, I mean that 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 video was viewed about 150 thousand times. I'm I, sure. I don't. I, I don't. I try not to pay attention. Really yeah, yeah, that's it's, fine. That's so fine. It's, but uh, it's so childish. Right, right. Happens. But I'm saying what what I'm saying is sometimes I, I don't I don't even care about views or, or about things like that. But but sometimes it gives you an indication about how much people care about a certain thing. Now for Israel and for these for Hebrew for the Hebrew language, for a video to have 150 thousand views oh, Hebrew, right? okay. is a lot because there's how many how many. So so what exactly happened? In this video, at the few, at the Azkara of Robin's death, whatever, his grandson, which didn't really care too much about his grandfather, didn't seem he. I mean, maybe he did, but he he was going to take this advantage, and he went at Bibi and he said, "Not only he didn't actually call Bibi by his name, and he also talked in general, but everyone assumed that he was targeting his situation against Bibi particularly." <laughs> um, he said, "All of you are." Fighting over the chair, you don't care about the politics. Step down, move away, clear your name, and come back a different day. Move away and, and, and clear your name, and that's what my grandfather did. And he brought up a couple instances, I guess, when Robin was under a lot of political pressure. And Robin he didn't clear his name of anything. The guy was a murderer of Holocaust survivors. Absolutely. He was a disgusting human being. 
I mean, there arguably, I mean, some people say that Rabin made the Oslo agreement in order to hold the Palestinians accountable afterwards, but he never got that chance, obviously. Uh, I, everyone knows today that the Oslo Accords have been broken a million times in the world. And, right. and, and Rabin, coming from a military background, would perhaps, this is just to his merit, it could be this is not true, obviously. We will never know because he was assassinated right after. But P, there are those who say that he was like, yeah, you want to make a peace agreement? All right, let's do it. And then the second the Arabs would break the agreement, he would go in and, and, and explain them exactly what agreements are all about. Uh, my, my thought about this, of, of like trying to dissect uh, politicians and, and try to make them look really, really smart and really sophisticated. I mean, if, if you ever read Atlas Shrugged, right? Uh, so it's, a, it's, it's, an, it's Ayn Rand's uh, magnum opus. But she she describes the politicians in that book or the the power people in that book not as like these sophisticated people with all these amazing plans and like these detailed uh, ways to conquer the world. They're just the zero point uh, of of different power struggles that compromise with each other, and there's really nothing there. I mean, when I when I look at Robin, he's just a, he's just a zero who ended up at the apex. Because different interest groups settled on him to get whatever money was coming to them from the system. There's nothing there. He's just a schlub. And he always was. I mean, maybe Bibi's a little bit sophisticated because he can maintain the seat for a little bit longer, but he doesn't do anything either. Well, the tape, they're turning Bibi into something that he isn't. I, uh, I would compare that to uh, what, what, what Hasidim maybe did with the Rebbe a little bit. That's what everybody does with their leader because it makes them feel nice and taken care of. Right. So I think that when you when you when you take a person and you turn him into something he's not, then uh, you start to lose whatever's happening. You start to the, the the touch and the reality start to fringe away, and then that's when you see things start to break up, and that's when you see the revolution born. Because the people in the middle are never convinced. That's the, that's where the battleground is. You see the battleground states in America, right? That's the people that are never. 100% bias in one direction, and that's where that's where all the action is because everybody wants to buy or 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 obtain the hearts and minds of those people in the middle. But once you take a leader and the leader loses track of what's happening, he starts to focus only on himself. And every time he has an opportunity to talk, he is advertising and he's, he's. I mean, on one hand, I can understand maybe like you know every like if Shas and Gimel and all these other groups are basically pledging that they're gonna align themselves with Bibi, so he has a couple, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 seats that are all pointing at him, so what do you want him to do? What do you expect? He's going to have to pitch himself, kind of, in the political race. Okay, but here still, we're, we're still talking about personal politics and where power centers are going to be for, for somebody's personal legacy and their gain and the books they're going to write about him and what they're going to say about him in history later when he's dead. But like, if, if we want to talk about, like, Let's say a politician with who was a really good leader and sly and tricky and like in a good way it would have to be a politician that actually has an ideology or a goal in mind beyond his own survival or legacy or what think what somebody will write about him later i mean let, let's say somebody with um if I were to pick a, a president well i mean every in, in the u s Someone with a Shlema Melech, David Melech, Shaul Melech. They all had books. They all had books written about them. Napoleon was a very, very particular about how history went down when when he went down, and and every battle he was like, no, 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 we're gonna write it like this, and we're gonna write it like that, and we're gonna edit this, and we're gonna make it sound even better than it was. And obviously today, with today's technology and historians, obviously they can, you know, recount everything and and, and check the facts, and they can even blatantly see that Napoleon was adding and like his his campaign in Egypt was pretty much a terrible idea and a lot of his soldiers died there from diseases and all kinds of things but he painted it like a victory and he came back with a bunch of like Napoleon, relics Napoleon was just about conquering things he just wanted to conquer people and control them he didn't have any ideology but like if if you were like let's say I mean, you, you can't really have people with ideologies being elected because they're so consistent that it confuses people like you know, for example, if we were, again we we're going to take Moshe Feiglin, is he ever going to be elected prime minister? Not without direct divine intervention, he's not because, I mean, he he can't. He he stands for a single idea of liberty, 
I mean, he's not. He's not flexible he's, enough. He's, he's not. He's not a politician. He's actually trying to accomplish a singular goal of something, and people can't handle that. I mean, like imagine, imagine what what the United States would look like if Ron Paul were president. It would. It, the world would be a completely different place. The entire U.S. Army would have been pulled out of like everything, <laughs> and 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 like the the whole world would have been a completely different track. I mean, that's someone who wants to accomplish something to actually to save a, a disaster from happening, which Trump is definitely not doing. He's staying in power. He's good at it because he has all these people fighting him to get him out of power. But what does it make a difference? I mean, he's, he has trillion-dollar-a-year deficits, and, and this bankruptcy, is co it's coming. It's coming, and he is making it come faster. I do. I mean, that's, uh, I think that's totally false. No, no, this. Is, yeah, I mean, okay, America, you're right. I don't America, feel. America is I don't the feel. Titanic. It's already hit the iceberg, and now it's cracking in half. And there is not that much time. There might be a year, year and a half. That's it. Um, I, I have to agree with you because I have seen many uh, indications to what you're saying. Many, many uh, people have studied the, the economics, which you're much better, well versed than I am. And, and, and I've come to the same conclusion that it looks like, uh, you know, shit's about to hit the fan, as they say. Yeah. Um, and, and that's going to actually be interesting to play out because we are in the modern era. It's not going to be interesting. It's going to be terrifying. It's going to be it, it, it's going to be bad. I mean, you, you think there's going to be starvation and everything, the whole nine yards? Um, among the very weak sectors of society, yes. People who live on Social Security, people here who live on B2FLME exclusively. Yes, there might be starvation. Here, there would be less because we're because thank God we're you know we're still a family here, and and sorry, the, in, in that we're a family. We not care just, about not, each other, not just a people, but we we do have a genetic connection to each other and and a cultural connection that Americans don't have. There will be less um, riots. There will be riots here, but but in America, it's going to get really bad. I mean, uh, what do you think particular? Where do you think the missile is going to hit? You think it's going to be the central banking system, the Federal Reserve? Here, here's here's what here's what I've I can't I I cycle through this in my head every time that somebody that I doubt myself and I doubt myself. Well, maybe I'm wrong about this. I keep saying that, and then I go back to this point that 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 in 1971 when the dollar left the gold standard, right the Inflation started spiking like 10, 15, almost. Yeah, I think the peak was like 17% a year. And this is by government statistics that are messed up and manipulated, and nobody believes them. But, but if the government says it's, the inflation is like 17% a year, it's probably like 50. But what, whatever. But and then, and then in 19 from 1978 to 1980, uh, you know, gold quintupled from uh, like a hundred. Or even more than that, from like 120, 130 dollars an ounce. So you're to like saying gold, something like that but gold the, is a good investment. Uh, for, I'm, I'm not talking about gold. It, uh, it's irrelevant. But the dollar was collapsing, and what Paul Volcker, the head of the Fed Federal Reserve, did was he jacked interest rates, overnight interest rates, up to about 20 percent, 20 percent, and the, the national that was the nail in the coffin. That 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 saved the dollar because it pushed interest rates above the rate of inflation and that calmed inflation down and people got, gained confidence in the dollar. We we're still living on that borrowed time from, from that, that time when Paul Volcker, put, Paul Volcker, the head of the Fed at that time, pushed interest rates up to that level. Rafi, now, do, you, do you think that at the end of the day the dollar is, is an illusion? Do you agree with that? It's not, it, it's not so much an illusion as – Like I mean imagine – think about it. Think about it right now. Let's say we're – let's say – let's just, just – just mean. On, hold on. Get back to that thought in a second, but okay. let me finish what I was saying. Okay. That that now at some at some point soon, inflation is going to start to creep up. Okay, and when it does, interest rates are what like a, a one and a half percent now. When it does, the Fed is going to have to move. Rafi, they are give us an example. Able. Give us an example for a layman. Interest rates uh, going up. Inflation. Give us an example. Uh, an example. Someone buying a house okay, or a so, car. So, okay, so, so, give, give us some uh, a layman, a layman's terms. Okay. So fine. Let's say let's say you're buying a house and you have a mortgage of uh, I don't know, two percent, very low, two and a half percent, whatever. So 
that means you have to pay less money every month to maintain your mortgage so you can afford to buy, let's say, a really expensive house because your mortgage servicing that debt is, is very low interest rates. So you can afford to buy a, a more expensive house or more expensive car or whatever it is. So the lower interest rates go, the higher prices. So interest rates basically means go. the amount of times I, I split my. Uh, it's, I, it's the amount of interest that you pay on what on the money that you're borrowing. If you borrow. You know, so let's say the uh, interest rate would basically mean if I'm taking a hundred thousand dollars from the bank, yeah. if the interest rate would basically be how how much the, the how much interest I'm paying, but also how I can spread it out, how long I can spread it out? Well, usually the, the most is 30 years, but even but a, a 2% mortgage, you'd have to take out a calculator. Like a 2% mortgage based on 30 years is going to be much lower monthly payments than, let's say, a 20% you know, mortgage that you would be able to take out in 1980. But that, that the higher interest rates go, the less you can afford each month, so the less, the less expensive things become. But, but mm -hmm. n now... Basically, the fee the bank takes for, for, for doing things. The fee anyone takes for, bar, for, for lending anything. It doesn't have to be a bank. It usually is. But anyone who lends money. It could be a car company giving you, you know, a loan Unless to buy the car. Unless it's family whatever. or friends. Like yeah. deep, deep. Whatever. But, but the point is when, when inflation starts to become obvious again, there is nothing at this point that the Federal Reserve can do to stop it because if they try to raise interest rates even to, let's say, 10%, which is half of where Volcker had to put them, the federal government goes bankrupt. They can't. They can't service a ten percent debt on a twenty-three trillion dollar ten percent rate on a twenty-three trillion dollar debt. So that it's over. Once once in, once inflation picks up in the U.S., it's over. So you're basically saying because they have been they have been picking it up all the time recently. It's very uh, very. It's, it's still like a one and a half two percent a year. When it starts to get to like three four five, people are gonna start freaking out. Uh, do, do you do you, do you what do you say to this? Uh, I've seen this information floating around that the Federal Reserve happens to hate Trump among other things. It's and, relevant. One second, and and the reason they they've been recently bumping up the interest rate is that the economic growth and the positivity that Trump brings to the table uh, shouldn't be as obvious. Could that could that be a factor? Because I've seen statistics that show like. In the Obama era and the era before, you see it's kind of flat. They raise it a drop, but then when in the Trump era, they just bump it really, really much, really, really high. Do you think that that's because they haven't they haven't bumped interest rates high? That hasn't happened. Okay, so then maybe I'm I'm just saying things. I don't uh, know. I don't know what maybe I maybe I'm looking at it. Maybe I'm not saying the right words or something. I don't know. No, they 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 have they haven't. If you if you look at if you look at the you know the broad line of interest rates since 1980, it's been going down since then. From twenty percent to now, you know, one and a half, or you know. <laughs> so you're saying if it's going up by a half a percent, and it happened to be during the time of Trump, that doesn't matter. It's right. They had they 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 were on a high. Well, I mean, I think that I they mean, were on a rate hiking cycle back since 2015 until recently, and they they pushed it from. Uh, the question is how much like can how much can uh, the the American people put out, right? How much how much output? Is there going to be for America, the value of the money? It's, and now it's a debt, so it doesn't America even. America doesn't have output. They have bar. They 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 are consuming people. They're they're a consuming nation because they borrow to consume, and they they borrow money from you know foreigners or the Fed prints it or whatever, and then and then the government takes that money, passes it out as welfare, and then the people who get the welfare buy their food, pay their rent or whatever. But there's no production. In order to be a producing country. You, you know, when, when I produce personally more than I consume, I have savings. Right? Right. When I consume more than I produce, I have debt. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, so the jobs in America, the factories in, in America that, that Trump kind of anchored and, and, and snatched them up and made some messed up regulation that forces those companies to make a calculated decision to stay in the United States. For example, he, he, he'll be like, oh, you want to go to Mexico to make cars? Oh, I'm gonna make those cars so expensive. You better make them here. So those kind of like you know, and and the person's an American, and you're like, you know what, you know, fine, I'll I'll make a I'll, I'll make my Ford factory here. I'll make my this. So those kind of small steps, or or bringing the coal mining back, don't do you think that that is a band aid at least on a big issue? No, it just makes it worse. Why? Why? I mean, if you <laughs> because you see, we were just talking about production and and and, and output, right? There has to be something that a value that that at least leaves the United States or 
Well, the way the way that the economy works is that you try to produce things at the lowest cost so you can sell them at a profit. Just generally, and everybody does that. So you know, you could, for example, grow bananas in Canada in you know in hot houses and spend millions of dollars making these artificial climates where you know it's really hot in like Costa Rica. But it, how much is banana going to cost? So he in, in America, it costs a lot of money to employ people because there are so many regulations for somebody to get a job, and they just keep getting worse. So obviously, it's easier to employ someone in Mexico to build a damn car. I mean, it's going to be wow. Cheaper. So you're saying okay? Well, I mean, well, when it comes to cutting regulation, Trump has has cut about for every one law. He he says twenty, but it, 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 it statistically is about four laws. For every one law that's written, he he cuts about four. I don't know what exactly that means, technically. That, that, does, that doesn't mean anything. That's just a talking point that, that they tell you in the news. But if you look at the Federal Register, which is the amount of regulations in the entire country, it only gets bigger no matter who is president. Presidents say different things. Nobody cuts a damn thing. Nobody. So how, so how, could, they, how, could, they, how could they say that with a straight face? I mean, I, I'm talking about people that... It's all entertainment. It's all lies. Just that, you know, look, look, at the, look at the Federal Register. It keeps growing. <laughs> Simple. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, again, you see, this is where we come back to the point where they say that Trump is an actor and he knows that to be a leader, you have to be a good actor. In order to be a politician, you need to be a good actor. So he's an actor. So it's fine. <laughs> I mean, again, okay, you know, uh, it's the fact that he's a lying, <laughs> lying son of a gun. Doesn't necessarily mean that he's not doing anything productive, but I, yes, okay. I I would be interested actually to look at the registry and see if the, if the laws are going up or down. Um, it could be he he. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So you're basically saying that Trump isn't adding anything to the table. So how? I mean, when they say that jobs are going up 400 percent, especially What's jo job like job growth jobs, but but okay. So you we, said we, we say the word job and it's like oh jobs and all jobs are good but like what if the government hires a million people to like you know hires more irs agents or something to harass people i'm just you know for argument's sake like those are jobs no and no they, but that's not the jobs that we're talking we're talking about you going in the street and the in the in the hood or in the in the in the neighborhood you know and and, and you're asking the, the the guys that are homeless if more people walked up to them and asked them if they want a job and i'm not and we're not talking about uh, the states that are like the whole state is just basically like Washington D.C. That the whole state is basically one big uh, government office. I'm talking about random places like where I grew up or where you grew up. I don't know. I'm the, the the coal mine industry is back because we don't have uh, Greta Thunderbird uh, running running uh, for climate change situation uh, uh, up in America. Um, so so I mean uh, there's a couple things I think that so 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 now it's becoming like you know what, maybe climate change, blah, blah, blah. You want to go clean? Everybody wants to go clean energy. Nobody likes it. I mean, the, 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 the strongest Republican doesn't want to have uh, when his muffler f spewing out garbage in his community. But at the same time, you have to look at like an example of Germany, which invested billions of dollars in clean energy. And I don't, I don't, I don't think it paid off. I mean, they, they, their, their system isn't foolproof. They've thrown their entire country into this liberal lunacy, and I don't know. It's not sustainable enough yet. Yet, um, even even uh, Tesla, he had the tiles for the houses with the solar panels. So Tesla, when he had the roof tiles, Musk. Sorry, Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon Musk. Yeah. So he had the roof, the the solar panel tiles that are supposed to. Solar City. Right? Yeah. Along so. Way, but that was a company that belonged to his like brother-in-law or something, so he bought it and paid him off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a couple houses. It, 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 so much bullshit. But okay. I mean, look. I mean, I think it would actually be pretty cool. You have a house that looks with like normal tiles and on the roof. They actually look classy, and and you have two huge battery packs that can sustain you for a, I don't know how long, and and pump your car and do your house. I mean, that would be awesome. But he had to kind of go back to the drawing board and say, we don't have it down packed. The solar is not taking in enough. It's too expensive to make it. It's not worth it. We can't sell it at a price that makes sense for the consumer. We got to go back and figure it out. We got to compact this technology, and that's like kind of the last 
we heard about this project. If you search up this project, which I think is an awesome project, you'll see the, la the last videos are like 2016, 2017, and these are the kind of things you're going to hear. So there's a lot of hype and a lot of, you know, motor, you know, and you have the electric cars. And I mean, in Israel, for example, there's not too many electric cars. There's not a lot of... They had better place that failed. Huh? There was, there was better, there was this whole project here, what was it, Shai Agassi, and you had this company, Better Place, I mean, there's this abandoned uh, battery charging station, Better Place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. ran out of money. There was, a, there was a couple companies that started up, and the point, what I'm trying to say is, is that Greta is a great girl, she should go into acting or something, but uh, I'm happy that um, Trump gave the uh, coal mining industry in America their freedom to work and right now it's very sustainable and right now it gave about a bunch of jobs back to some people so good for them and i don't think again government regulation shutting down people from doing a certain job because you think you might have a better idea that's not provable yet because again you know in capitalism at least you know the bigger fish wins you have a better product that's going to work you know, Coca-Cola has their game down packed. They can make a can for like 10 cents. So they they, they, they got this. Oh, boy. We're down. <laughs> We're down. The light. The candles are out. We're, I mean, we, we can keep going just a little bit. The point is that uh, what I'm trying to say is that I think that Trump gave some opportunity. He gave some... Uh, he gave some incentive for America to try to get back on its feet. Now... How do you translate this motivation into success? I don't know. It's too complicated for me to know. But I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it from a very baseline level, from an emotional level. I think uh, people were getting depressed. I mean, people are depressed. There's a lot of suicide. Well, what, yeah, of... I mean, what do you mean getting America back on its feet? Like, again, if you, if you just look at somebody, uh, somebody's personal budget, right? So, so when somebody's not on their feet, they need help. Like they move in, they move in. No, people have been giving up. Their, you know, uh, I mean, the, 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 I think the biggest issue today is depression, and it's because there's just such a overload of information oh, that yeah. people are losing their well, identity. They why don't do you think have. I moved to Katsuri and I want to get away from all this. <laughs> exactly, me too. So there's this overload of identity, also identity. I, the identity of people is being jeopardized. Now you always had people that they were losing their identity. Um, let's say you know, sons of this and you know bastards grew up in a, in, a, in, a, in Jorge 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 the kid that was born while crossing the Mexican border and nobody knows who his dad is. But what I'm saying is is that there's always been this loss of identity and those people usually signed up for the army and stirred up a bunch of crap. You know they found their identity the community that they were looking for in the army out of all places and 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 they would go. Some people join the army. Some people join a drug gang. Some people. Uh, yeah, and, and what I'm trying to say is not a lot of intellectuality, not a lot of understanding of the of of the wind. You know, all the wise people they never pick up arms. They never go to fight because they've seen it all. They've been they not, they didn't they haven't actually been there, but they've read all the books. They know how wars finish. It's not something you want to be part of. Like Jonathan was telling me, uh, the reason why uh, they they always need fresh blood in the military is 17 year olds and you know Agafa Instagram, like I like to call it. Is because you does you you're only gonna charge into fire into live fire once, and you do it with twenty of your naive friends that think it's cool or that we're all pumped up for it, and after you lose a couple of your friends in that first charge, you 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 become a veteran at that moment at that very moment, and you're never gonna do it again. So that's why they always need fresh meat. There's not a lack of soldiers. There's a lack of stupid soldiers, and I mean. I'm just, I'm just trying that, to. That, that, that brings to mind something. It's kind of unrelated, but um, go ahead. There, there was there there was one movie, one war movie that that I, I that I really really loved, and that that was Hacksaw Ridge. You ever see that? No. Okay. So ha Hacksaw Ridge is about the Seventh Day Adventists, like this like sect of Christians that for some reason they stick to you know Shabbat being on the seventh day instead of. Uh, Instead of Sunday, and yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. But, but like this, as the this, Old Testament tells us, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So this this was like a, a Seventh Day Adventist Christian who refused to pick up a gun. He it was his principle; he wouldn't touch a gun, and but he didn't want to dodge the draft because people were dying in the war, and he didn't want to kill anybody. Uh, is that the one where the where, where he where he goes and he argues his case to be a medic without yeah, yeah, weapons? Yeah. He, oh, he wanted to be a combat medic. 
All he wanted to do was save people from being killed in a war. And so he could have dodged the draft because he's against war, and that would have also been heroic. But but he decided to like dodge the draft in, in, in that he would be a soldier but without killing anybody. And he spent – he he charged into fire so many times to save Japanese and American soldiers as much as he You see, but this could. is this is a person with a spirit. This is yeah, not yeah. some see, guy I'm looking saying, for that's, glory. That's a real yeah, but he wasn't looking for glory, but he got it. He got real glory. Right, right, right. But those you see, you see that's the different. You know, when when I'm talking about a guy that's you see, we, I was talking about like it depends where you're coming from when you're going into something. But it ties into what we're talking about politicians, right? The, the, this guy had a singular purpose to save lives. And he he charged into fire and he risked his life hundreds of times and he 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 lived, <laughs> he saved a lot of people. Right, but you see, that's a person of faith. That's a person with a mission. Um, you know, statistically, and, and, and you know, they, if you research this stuff, you know that the bravest, strongest, you know, you know, thick-skinned people are people that have a cause, and that could be to live for your family, that could be to live for your religion. Like it be to save lives, and it's almost like angels really spread their wings over such people. And uh, in this case, the guy's like, you know what? If I can't save people, then what? What is this about? You know, and he's not there anymore. He's he's given up his identity for the cause, for a higher, for a greater cause, for a religious cause, for God, for 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 what he feels is right. How about the bittel, right? That's bittel. That's bittel, man. That's bittel. Get some bittel. Get some Bittle here. Vitamin Bittle. On sale now. 50% off. Infowars.com slash forward slash store. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I'm, I, this is a guy with a cause. What I was talking about is people that are, we were talking about, like, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's this part in the, Napole the Napoleon, Napoleonic Wars video that they did. The best one they did, uh, I think, in 1970-something. They did a really good one. They invested, I don't know, probably millions of dollars. <laughs> they got like, they got the whole battle all over again, just to, you know, just just to get that feeling going. And there's a part where Napoleon's brother's riding on a horse next to him, and he tells him, "The army stinks of wine and and ass." <laughs> so Napoleon tells him, "Don't worry, soon they're gonna be stinking of gunpowder." And like they cut to another scene, and and you see Napoleon and his brother. I don't know if it's right after that, but later on there's a scene. You see them both on a ridge looking at the soldiers going into battle. And Napoleon's like, ah, it always looks good in the beginning. It always looks so nice in the beginning. You see all the soldiers lining up in formation, marching all beautifully. And, he, and, and then there's actually a part where, he, where Napoleon tells the horses to charge. And, and one of the generals says, is that going to do it? And Napoleon says, no, but it looks awesome or something. And and like those kind of subtle, small jokes for any person that's careful enough, you know, obviously it's a movie, but I'm sure they did some good research into the mind, into the mentality, into the psychological. I mean, I, I believe that Napoleon was manic. I mean, the guy was locked up on an island, escaped, <laughs> escaped the asylum, got back with the people, made some more trouble, got the whole place all riled up. I mean, I mean, he was running a tight schedule, man. I don't know if he had time to eat or sleep. That guy was probably running a thousand miles per hour from from from. from I mean, that's that's all that's all the ingredients for a manic episode. I mean, for anybody, you know, bipolar or whatever. But in any case, and and obviously it all ended up in fit. I mean, he was a great tactician. He had a lot going for him, but. At the end of the day, he lost in Waterloo. What I'm trying to say is that the people that are signing up, I'm like looking at the life experience of a depressed loser that grew up in a bastard house and ends up in the army looking for community, ending up killing himself or his friends, you know, giving up his entire... The guy, is the, who, who is signing up and saying, you might die? I mean, security guard... It, it's a good thing, maybe, if the odds are very... If I would be a security guard, or if I would be a target of any kind, I'd be like, oh, man, I'd be with a vest and I'd be with a helmet. I don't know. I mean, I would be thinking about it. I mean, am I ready to sign up? Is my life that... Is that is that is my life that miserable? Am I so out of options? Am I putting my life on the line for this? Am I taking a gamble with my life? 
Well, a lot of people do. Th a lot of people do think that way because government shuts so many people out of so many industries. I mean, just look at us in the Golan. We have like land all over the place, and we're not allowed to build a damn thing. We're not allowed to touch it. We're not even, <laughs> I don't even think we're allowed to collect the rocks. And, yeah. We don't even have cars to collect the rocks. I mean, it's not because you know there's not there's no butter in Israel right now. Like, hello, oh, yeah, because I of have, regulation. I've had to. They have there's like one butter machine. Right, but no one's allowed to like build another one because Tnuva has all the rights to a butter monopoly in this country and taxes on importing dairy. Yeah, that's you see the, the 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 mayor of Katsurin actually told me if I want to be the exclusive uh, person to do certain activities here, it has to be auctioned off, and I have to be by the auction and I have to buy the auction from the government. So I don't want to cut anyone out. I don't want to be the only one doing something here. Why is that even a thing? I, Otherwise, you won't even have permission. My, my strategy is just let them spend, go deeper into debt, and I'll come out of hiding when they go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting. I don't, I don't, I don't fight them. I don't complain against them. I have no expectations. I just want them to go bankrupt. Yeah, I mean, I mean, not the, the, the truth be told, many citizens are smarter than the entire government put together, and they kind of look at them like like you look at your kids playing in the garden. Yeah. yeah. And and you can you just you, it's not about not everything needs a response not everything needs a uh, uh, yeah some things just just be left alone and there's not it's not going anywhere right you know it's like a teacher has to keep his cool in class even though one kid's kind of edgy and jumping around you just know that the kid's gonna settle it's like it's like a cup that you shake with a bunch of dirt in it. You know, eventually it's just gonna settle. There's not too much you can do about it. The more you shake it, the more the more you try to play with it, you're gonna try to push the dirt down. It's just gonna make it more intense. That's kind of like sometimes how I feel about the government. It's kind of like, because nah, it, it's all it's all a scam. And what happens, you know, Sheker and Laura Glai, you know, it it all it all dissipates, man. I mean, but obviously, if we can interfere with the pro with into the matrix and make change. That would be beneficial positively, or even kind of maybe. Uh, yeah, well, if if I felt that I was the kind of person that could do that, that ha that had the, you know, the political the stamina, mind. as Trump would say, the stamina. I she doesn't have the stamina. I, I, <laughs> I, I don't have the will to like go in and try to change things politically. I'm I'm done with that. But like, if, if somebody were to give me the key to the budget, uh, <laughs> and, I could, and I could make a cleaver to it and just just cut. And get rid of all these things. By the way, actually, I, I would really get rid of so much. I would open up a port in Katsurin and import things without any taxation. Screw the entire economy just from here. Imagine I can bring in things from China at dirt price. We would be like a loophole into the entire Israel. We'd be like that guy, in, that Japanese guy giving out passports in Germany. If we could make like a port next to the the, the little puddle we have, <laughs> make a, an official port and like you know. Drug dealers and you know just drop things with parachutes. Like an official port in Katrin, and get this thing going, guys. This is my official one for. <laughs> no, we're 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 looking into uh, ways to make. I mean, the dinosaur is dying, and that's the fake, deep state, corrupt. You know, I mean, you know, I was thinking in the beginning that the Trump revolution was a symptom of the left being wrong. And the right taking over. There is no, there was no Trump revolution. He's just a personality. That yeah, yeah, yeah. But he represented a lot of things. You know, New Yorkers have he a represents very represents anger generally, nothing more than that. Yeah, anger and also um, he but was. So does, so does Elizabeth Warren. She just represents anger in a different direction. But yeah, in a very emotions. in a very gay way, <laughs> gay way, in a very yeah. babyish way. I mean, well, I'd say Trump is pretty babyish too. You know? Yeah, but at least he carries. I mean, he, he looks like a tank. Elizabeth Warren looks like a fig. Uh, I mean, like a, like a, like a like a twig. I'm sorry. She, yeah, she, then you have the angry Jew, Bernie Sanders, who gets angry in a Jewish way, and it's embarrassing. Bernie Sanders looks like a meatball. <laughs> he he just he's just. I mean, I think that the, deep down he has something going. He has an idea of some sort. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure. You know, I think that I think. Listen, you know what? Every person in the world has something to offer humanity. But you got to get down to the bottom of them, figure them out. And, and sometimes they're only good for one part of it. Like Bibi Netanyahu is great for the United Nations. 
He's good. He can talk there. Does he have to run Israel just because he's good at talking in the United Nations? No. <laughs> I mean, uh, what I think no, of Moshe, should you know why Moshe Feiglin might not ever become prime minister? I'll tell you why. Because he's niche related. What does that mean? Niche is, Come let's on, say, niche is nothing. Not all right. No, not not like that. Niche is like you have a niche, like in 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 in. Oh, a niche. A niche, like a niche. Yeah, sorry, niche. You're talking Yiddish. No, no, no. So he he has a niche for specific. He's not. He's not a mixed. He's not an MMA. He's not a mixed martial arts. And if you want to be a leader of a mixed community, you got to talk to a mixed community. If you know that 60% of your population is Jewish and 40% is Arab, uh, I don't, I don't know, that's just generalizing. But you have to know the de demographics. I'm talking to Arabs, I'm talking to Russians, I'm talking to Jews, I'm talking to Chechnyans, I'm talking to, I don't know, and I'm talking to Argentinians, I'm talking to this. And you need to talk and you have to get into the minds of the communities you're dealing with and service them in what they care about. Don't offer them candies with different flavors, with different names on them. With, you know, tr we're going to translate my speech into all the languages. No, you got to understand the mentality. Like Jews would be very, very happy. I, I was watching this thing and I was baffled when I saw it. You know, every every year the presidents usually light the menorah in Washington. You know what else they do? They they light um, a candle in an Indian ceremony. I don't know what it's called. The closest name I can think of is the Taj Mahal, even though I know I'm wrong. <laughs> it just sounds messed up. I know, I know. And it's a Trump building, and yeah, well, and it's a casino. But it, it just sounds Indian. That's all I could say. <laughs> now, but there's some kind of Indian ceremony, religious ceremony, that Trump took part of. And I was reading the script of what he said. And it was like, you know, the Indian community get together to turn darkness into light. And this is such an important theme that's so important for humanity, so important. And I'm like, you take this speech, you copy paste it, and you give it to Trump when he's lighting the menorah, and it's, the Jews are going to be all biased for him because, oh my God, he spoke about the menorah and turning darkness into light. I mean, oh my God, you look what Judaism contributes I, I, to I the think world. Trump, Trump may have the least, the, the smallest vocabulary of any president. I, I no, listen, how, what, what are the odds? I mean, how many Jews are there in America? Uh, two million, three million, four million? I don't know. I think, I think it's more than five. I think it's about six million. Six million Jews? Maybe a little less. I think it was five and a half, maybe 20 years ago. Okay, so I mean, there's a couple million Jews. It's 300 million. I mean, how much do you know about Christianity? Not too much. It's kind of silly. How much know. do you know about Indian culture? Less. How much do you know about Russian culture? A little bit more. I uh, the vodka, Russian though, is getting... <laughs> the hand out bottles of vodka. And, and, uh, and Santa hats. But, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you got... I mean, a leader... I mean, how much can... You, the truth is, if you think about it in a normal way... I mean, this guy... I mean, Trump is, let's say, Christian, right? So let him just be Christian. Why do Jews expect him to be Jewish? Indians expect him to be... Indian. I mean, relatable. He has to be relatable. Relatable is very different. I mean, he's lighting menorahs, lighting. I mean, that Indian thing. That might even that might even be Avodah That might be idol worship. It might even go against the menorah thing. I mean, you have. But he has to be relatable. It's not about what he's doing. Some. I mean, what's the, what's the subliminal message? Subliminal message is I think about you sometimes. You know, even even for Chabad, there are a couple niches. Like the Rebbe's birthday is Education Day in America. President signs it every year, and every year it's the Obama or Bush or Trump. Every what's what's amazing is you know like if you want to become mayor or if you want to become prime minister, you got to understand you're dealing with a very diverse crowd. So if you're going to talk about one niche that's only applicable, and you try to you think you're broad because you you added a couple words, or you think you're broad because instead of just saying Jewish, you said everybody. You're not understanding the complexity of your community. That's why I think many of the uh, parties, the political parties in Israel right now, are screwed up because they're all picking sides and they're all well, they're alienating. Well, because none of them stand for anything. That's also true. <laughs>
I mean, but they're, but you know what? Even, even, you know, forget about if they stand for anything or not. The fact that they don't even understand how shit works. You could be a good, I mean, Epstein, like we spoke about, like Jews are the best at everything. Epstein, Epstein was the best pedophile ever. He, I don't say pedophile. Yeah, he was the maybe. best pimp. The best pimp. <laughs> he was the best pimp, and Madoff was the best thief. We got the best of the best here in Judaism. You know, the thing is, we're so complex, we can never agree on anything. We're all headed to the moon. We're all like the stars, actually. Hey, look, he says that Hashem says we're all like the stars. We're going to be like the stars of the heaven. Well, the spar- stars are like really far apart from each other. <laughs> well, I mean, it made off was pretty good, but the trio of, um, of uh, what's his name? Alan Greenspan, Ben Bernanke, and Janet Yellen. They were much bigger thieves than Bernie Madoff. They and were they? Stole, they stole like sixteen trillion. Were they Jewish? All of them were Jewish. Oh boy, single-handedly. The last three Federal Reserve heads. Oh well, Madoff. Madoff, I think, one. gets credit for for All doing for for juggling the whole situation on one hand. That was just fifty billion dollars. That today, just fifty just, billion dollars. Just today, the Fed printed over a hundred billion dollars in overnight repos for banks. Just today. Yeah, just come with your forklift and pick some up, bro. Oh my God! I mean, sixteen trillion dollars they printed in two thousand eight. That's the, it, it's not. It's like. Can somebody please bomb the the Federal Reserve with a nuclear it's bomb? Not gonna do anything. Just just the building. Just just for <laughs> just for you know just for the Fourth of July as like a gift to humanity. You could even let them know here, that, I, so that they can leave before. I'd, I'd recommend to everybody to watch this. To go to YouTube and type in one hundred million dollar penny. Just type that in and watch the video. It's like a six-minute video, and it, what what it does is it, it takes it takes a theoretical penny that's a hundred million dollars, and and says what what you could buy with this penny, and, and it just keeps going on and on and on and on, and then it shows you like the amount of these pennies that they printed, in the, in two th- that Congress the, the bailout the seven hundred dollar. What, what why do you call it a hundred million dollar penny? No, no, look, theoretically, if you had a penny that's a hundred million dollars, right? How much could you buy with that penny? And then to visualize. An entire pile of these pennies coming down on Congress. That's how much they bailed out in 2008. But it's it's, it's nothing compared to the bailouts that the Fed made in 2008 behind the back of people that, that were audited and they counted them as 16 trillion. The Federal Reserve now, is one of the shadiest situations I've ever seen. I mean, I don't want I don't want to get any vulgar language here unnecessarily, but they are some shady. You know the rest of the tale. I mean, the Federal Reserve. You, you know what I mean? Now I feel bad saying this, but like I think that I'm, you know, once in a I don't know, man. I mean, you know, the world's problems are above and beyond. Let's bring it back a little bit. <laughs> Let's bring it back. The point is, every yeah, single we gotta wrap this up. Yeah, every every person today has a choice to be willfully ignorant or to get on board and get his IQ high up there somewhere. Research. The internet is open for business, and it's not just open for you know what else. It's open. It has the 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 the, the information of everything. I mean, just go out and learn and study and broaden your horizons. Um, I don't know about evolution, but bro, there's a lot of evolution to be done in in, in up in the mind. I mean, this. I mean, I think a lot of people don't uh, don't invest enough in themselves. They think they're running after the the mundane and people look at me sometimes and say when did you have time to think of all this crap when did you cook all this challenge up i mean bro you gotta think i mean think think i mean do you even know that you exist i mean we have people now talking about aliens this and extraterrestrial and what's in area 51 and this nigga saw that and i mean i got a couple serious people on joe rogan's podcast talking for two hours about this stuff and then you have people saying bro it's a psyop there and the government's just pulling our leg it just never ends. The point is, guys, be informed, broaden your horizons, understand that when you're dealing with a, ver- you know, you know, you don't have to see the world in in the lens that you were born with. Take the glass, those that lens off, and try to be a little more open. And if you want to run for politics, understand it's not about you; it's about the people you serve. If you don't understand that, don't get involved. And if you're a crook, stay away from politi- politics. There's enough, you know, there's enough drug gaming, you know. I mean, I, I don't, I, you know, to be honest, if 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 crooks want to deal with gambling, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, all the things that kill people, maybe making cars. I mean, there's enough things that kill people 
the, that, that, that the dark side can deal with maybe you know, heart surgery oh shit I dropped a fork in there no there's enough things that I mean there's enough dark things that we need professionals in I mean if someone's going out to gamble then go make gambling machines why do you need to get involved in politics politics is where the normal people also live you know that the good and hard are the people that are involved in goodness and kindness and 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 they strive to I mean there's there's like you know when you have when you make a milk you, you got the uh, when you're making cheese and you divide the the, the whey from the curds. the curds right the curds we'll talk about that later <laughs> <laughs> it is never end. But when you're when you're making cheese and you're dividing the chemicals, right? So so that's like I I feel like the the internet's like aha I'm from the good guys aha I'm from the bad guys. People are like kind of polarizing into like groups. And well, I, nothing you read on the internet is true either. But it's a cartoon. It's all a cartoon version of what really the truth is. But no one can avoid the cartoon versions of whatever they think is real because everyone's talking through their own mind. Of course, of course. The point is, guys, keep dreaming big. We want Mashiach. You know what Mashiach is. Whatever you want it to be. You see, that's where, <laughs> that's why we all want it because it's whatever you want it to be, and that's why we never get it because the second we actually get down on paper, all of a sudden we're like, no, nah, I, I just wanted a car, and the guy's like, no, I just wanted a house. Like, I just actually wanted to get married. I mean, I didn't have kids for twenty years, and so then all of a sudden you're like, no, it's about a Sanhedrin and building a building in Israel. And, 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 and getting a king and having 20, 70 sages. What does all this have to... Uh, oh, when do I get the car? Call me when I get the car. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be, you know, parked outside. So, so I mean, you know, I mean, Mashiach and God connecting. You know, they... they, they okay, with this, let's finish. The seance was... I mean, there's some people that believe that, that it works. I mean, I've, I've yet to try it because I'm Jewish. You're talking about seances? Yeah, where you bring a soul and you, bring, you turn up a cup. How do we get to that? I'll tell you why. Because there were some very technical scientific research done about it. I mean, you know, this is this is up in the air. And they say that the whole thing moving around, it basically brings out a very, very subconscious desire from the people. Are you talking about these people who pretend that they talk to dead people in front of big crowds? Not those. I'm talking about the people that are sitting in a basement and actually think that this might work and they try it. Okay. So when so some scientists basically say that there are some brilliant answers and some brilliant information that comes up, but the way they explain it scientifically is is that the the, the, the subliminal will of the people is what directs the cup, which is kind of like they kind of surrender their so con. You're on a Ouija board? What are you talking yeah, about? yeah, Ouija board. They surrender oh. their consciousness to the board. That's the so that so that's what they're getting. So yeah, so it looks cool, and and, and there's actually messages and everything, but and they can write it down. So how do you get this? That's the subliminal consciousness of everybody in the room when they surrender themselves to you know. But but that's just an idea. Now what I'm trying to say is is that you know God, you can call it Mashiach. I mean that's like you know Rafi. There's just one last topic that I want to touch on. And instead of touching on the topic, I'm going to pull out. Can I pull out? But get my phone. And I was actually going back. And this is Rafi. I know. I know we're in a rush, but this is worth it. Trust me. Um, it's kind of like me and your stuff. Um, I asked this guy about the Rebbe Gimel Tammuz. You know, I, I've, I've been dealing with this conspiracy that some people want that the Rebbe did, and 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 and. This guy is telling me, I was around at the time, and I can tell you that there were a lot of people that wanted the Rebbe dead, inside and outside, for maybe not not consciously, but maybe subconsciously. The Rebbe started talking crazy about Mashiach and things, and that was too much for certain people. The Rebbe disappearing, quote unquote, during the Gimel Thomas era, basically means that the Meshachistim will be able to continue to narrate and create the narrative that they want on their own, on their own, whether the Rebbe is alive or dead. And those that aren't Meshachistim get to enjoy the benefits of a sane message that was delivered over the, over the course of 90 years, or whatever, the Rebbe's time. And... That like it, it was almost like everybody did their part. According to this person, he said everybody did their part. The Chassidim did their part. This and that. 
there was no i mean you know and 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 i this brings me back to a thought that i had earlier which is when the rebbe had uh uh you know the rebbe had a custom not to sleep the whole entire sukkah because the previous labav yeah, no, yeah, yeah. right and now what i'm thinking is is the rebbe had a stroke or was it a stroke or a heart attack at the end of service and simphastera right so you can imagine the rebbe wasn't sleeping for eight days straight or seven days straight trying to be all spiritual and, and, and shit. I mean, good for him. But I think that if the Chassidim really cared about the Rebbe, the Rebbe cared about the Rebbe as a person, not just what can we get out of him, not just being selfish about it, they would get a Beisden together and force the Rebbe to, to listen to the Beisden because the Rebbe respected the Beisden. The Rebbe wouldn't go against the Beisden. And they would force the Rebbe to go to sleep during the day, during the night, maybe during the afternoon. But they're in the sukkah, outside the sukkah, maybe in a broken ass sukkah. I don't know, but they would help the Rebbe care about the Rebbe as a person. And not just be like, oh, when's the Rebbe come? Oh, yeah, can the Rebbe prove me? Can the Rebbe buy my heart and, and convince me that he's the Mashiach? I think uh, that the Chassidim. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so, like, not Hasidish personality and I have no Rebbe at all. So that, like, that, that, none, that's none, fine. None of this registers in my head as anything other than lunacy. So. Yeah, no, but I'm saying uh, okay. What I'm trying to say is is that is that sometimes people um, look at a leader and they kind of look for the benefits they're trying to get out of him, and they don't care about the leader. It's almost like we like eating fish, but we don't like the fish. But not like fish. The rebel was a person, and I think people are people, and we have to remember that. So I mean. I mean, Joe Rogan helps do that a lot because he takes a lot of people that are idealized. He takes the most famous people and he just breaks them down into like a basic conversation. And all of a sudden you realize, you know what? This guy's name is Bernie Sanders. You know what? He's also a person. He might not be uh, the best person in the world or he might have ideas that are dangerous for humanity if implemented. But he's a person. You know, they, 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 you know, there's a lot of criminals in jail. There's a lot of dangerous people there. So that if they ran the world... Home, so was Stalin. He was also a person. Right, Stalin, example of a person that killed about 100, almost 100 million people. And Bernie Sanders would kill million, millions too, not intentionally. but you know. No, unintentionally, with good intentions, you know. <laughs> so um, let's try to be more positive and, you know... The Rebbe, had, the Rebbe had good ideas, like goodness and kindness. The Rebbe kind of, I think, had, had a good message, you know. Out of all out of all the messages we're getting these days, the Rebbe wasn't talking about government. The Rebbe tried to mix out of politics. The Rebbe kind of tried to push a message: goodness, kindness, give charity every day, go out of yourself, be aware of your surroundings. I agree with that. Okay, we gotta we gotta end gotta up. wrap this up, people. If you like, share, subscribe. You know, share with your friends. We're 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 a broken channel here. We got we got no support. You know, don't even trip. We're we're not even hitting. I mean we. We wish we had a thousand subscribers. That would be nice, right? right, right. <laughs> how many likes? That's fine. How many likes? How many likes do you think? I don't, this... I don't have any girl. I'm just talking. Yeah, I know, I know. But how many likes do you think this video deserves? Ten, I five. I don't know. Five, ten. More than three. More than three. He says more than three likes. Okay, we'll we'll stick with three likes on the video. And uh, y you know, if you if you wanna, if you think this is interesting, then maybe you should subscribe. Uh, yeah, okay, we're done the plug. <laughs>